Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Talk brought to you by Everag. This is your weekly news feed for all things market tech. Each week, we bring you updates on the markets with unique perspectives from an amazing team of analysts with the intention of helping dairy, livestock, and grain hedgers manage their risk. I'm your host, Jim Matthews, reporting from the Chicago office. With me today, from the outer rim of Mandalore, the Mandalorian. Team, how are we doing today? Fantastic. So Cody and Andy are actually gone this week and asked me to step in, and I kindly obliged for those two awesome gentlemen. Of course I did. So... With that being said, we've got Mando here. We've got four different charts that people have asked us to look at. And that is exactly what we're going to do for this episode of Tech Talk. So Mando, without further ado, should we jump in to the first chart? Looks like we have Dece Meal. All right, so a little December soybean meal action here. Let's go. What do you think here, boss? Well, we tested some of those uh, those highs the past couple of days and... Couldn't quite break through. Was that 440 at the top? It tried. That looks like tried. 437. It couldn't get through uh, pretty close. 439er. Didn't get through. Didn't get as high as the outer rim up there, but it got pretty close. I don't know. Like the, what's, that something sticks out to me. So we always look at the momentum, right? And then relative strength. And it, it, it didn't get the same peak that it, you know, this is what, back in like mid-June? So, and if it starts to roll over a little bit, that's that's a sign that it's almost like a double top, but just in the secondary indicator, right? So I think you got to be a little bit careful. I guess if I was long, I'd want to be at least like buying puts or maybe like getting out of futures and buying calls or something like that. This has had a heck of a move. Yeah, it has. Right? And it did it where now it's getting itself into oversold territory. If you look down at the RSI down here, right? It broke through it, came back, did it again. If it starts to trickle lower beyond that, it just it tells you that it, it got overbought. And then, you know, if, if it comes back below that red line, it stays there. You know, that's another sign of weakness and momentum slowing down. If it does, then I think you got to look at like this convergence of these moving averages. This is 20, 50 and uh, 200 day. You're starting to kind of converge them in a little bit, right? A little like galaxy pattern or something like that. And it's just starting to cut. Like I, I would imagine if we rolled over, you that becomes a magnet. And that's down at what, four, about 400? Give or take. I mean, it'll change yeah. as, you know, as we move throughout the, like the rest of the contracts, you know, it's like the life of the contract. Right. But I mean, for the most part, you're, you're, like, so you're getting some convergence there. I, I think that becomes a magnet if we start to roll over. So yeah, 400, that's also a price too, where, I mean, the market clearly took off from 390, 400. This has been a heck of a run here. It has, but there's also, I mean, the past couple of days, we've had a, a lot of intraday volatility higher to lower. And I mean, not breaking too hard for the past couple of sessions, honestly. Sure. That's why I think you got to be a little bit careful if you want to flip and get short. I think you need to get a close. Like, I think you got to get below this, like all this noise, right? Because look at this, look at right here, 420 yeah. broke. Once it took off, once it got through that price, it started to accelerate. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's just, it's a price that the market never really wanted to sit still from. So I think if you got back below 420, let's say you closed 420 or lower and then open lower after that. I think it becomes a bit of a free, not free fall, but I think you, you move relatively quickly to 400 bucks. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of do or die time. Right. And you know, even if it did that, it still wouldn't necessarily, I, I think you, you, you've got a pretty steep, tr like you still have some room, right. From, if you wanted to start from like right here, you still have yeah. some room to break. So yeah, I mean, it looks like you could have a bit of a setback. Like you said, if you're long futures, maybe consider buying puts against those, especially if you've got some from, Jim, you were telling people to buy this stuff. I, I was able to catch your episode from the spaceship. I um, was. I was. If you watch the uh, the grain feeds every week, Paige broadcasts that stuff across the galaxy. You get to watch this yeah. stuff all over the place. Halloween, the whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, we, so. we did. We told people to get in here and buy puts. In case you are long, get in here, buy puts, protect what you have built into those futures. Yeah, there you go. Speaking of buying puts, uh oh. Oof. Yikes. Woof. S and P. Woof. Not looking um, good for you or me. <laughs> womp womp. Yeah, I mean this. It, so this is like this longer. We drew this one. I mean, this is not playing out the way we like. Or those two turkeys 
<laughs> like what is it? Yeah. What are their names? Cody, Andy. Yeah, they, they said Andy. to do this. Yeah, no, wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's this is this is a weekly S and P, right? So you typically want to you you lean more towards the higher longer time frames when you're looking at charts, and then kind of drill them down a little bit uh, on a, a smaller time frame. This kind of weekly to daily. Either way, I mean, neither of them look great, right? I mean, it looked like we were going to take a shot at at making this like the this LA wave type move. Yeah, maybe we still do, but. You know, you, now you have a close on a weekly basis below this 50 week moving average after assuming we close this here or lower tomorrow. Correct. Um, that's that's not looking good. I mean, that looks like that wants to now to go test this. This would be 200 weekly moving average, right? The green one. And that's no bueno. But if we look at, I mean, this daily, it's, I mean, yikes. You just they, have they this both nice look clear. pretty bearish. Yeah, I mean, you have like a nice clear downtrend, right? And you you could theoretically move higher here and still be trending lower, right? Let's say you had like a little bit of a retracement. I guess if you wanted to say like we we're gonna you know break out of this downtrend, you probably have to clear this four forty twenty number, forty four twenty number. What is this number? Forty four and a quarter ish, forty four thirty. So you did that, and it converged with this downtrend here, right around here. Yep. Okay, maybe you'd have something to talk about. But I mean, until then, the bolt alert, the bears are, they're in control. Weekly, yeah. not looking so hot. Let's take a quick peek at the monthly. Yikes. Yeah, it doesn't look any better. Uh-oh. The monthly really doesn't look good. No. I mean, the monthly, I mean, you have a clear lo lower high. Yeah. Yikes. You know what the monthly yeah. kind of looks like? Let me just go back to this one. It's like, I think it was 2011. April 2011. There no. you go. Yeah. I remember this one. I remember this one because cash, cash cheese was like here or something, like right up here when it started, well, like right around this move. Um, and then cash cheese went like this, Boop. more like that, but who's counting? But yeah, I mean, like this is a great example of, you know, an M lower high kind of formation, right? And 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 how, how nasty it could get. Yeah. Right? So let's go back and look real quick at that on a monthly. Shaping up to be very similar. Look yeah, out. It, it really is. The M formation is definitely taking its uh, formation here. Could be, dude, this could be quite the trick or treat here. I don't know. <laughs> this could be quite the trick or treat. This one's coming up. This one came all over the galaxy. I mean, people are just definitely wanted to talk about this one. March feeders. Talk about a volatile market here, too. Woof. And this is, yeah, woof is right. I guess the only thing that sticks out to me that could that could prevent it from continuing to break is that it's it's clearly crossed. If you look at the RSI down here, it's clearly crossed in the oversold territory. The thing about that is, though, until it crosses back above that blue line, then momentum is still you know relative, like the, the, it's still weak, right? Okay. It's 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 kind of like a that break through that blue line is it's like a warning if you're short, but if it doesn't come back, that's that's it's still you, you maintain shorts. It's just saying that this is unsustainable price action right here, right? Which, I mean, you could certainly make the argument. The problem is, is that if it, this is, I drew this line beforehand. This is 236.10, call it 236 is the low here from this is, this is earlier this week. We had that Catalan feed report on Friday, opened pretty weak to start the week. And now this is from the 24th, so it's two days ago. Yeah. This low is 236.45, this low at this day right here. If you get a close at 236 and a quarter or something, anything below that, get a close there and then open lower the next time. I mean, I think you get three more candles like this. Kind of a like a bearish flag formation, honestly, right? I mean. Looking at that? It, it sure feels like it could be a little bumpy. A little dicey. A little dicey, but this is the way. 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 Yeah, last but not least. So, Summer class class three. Three. what do you want to talk about here, Jim? I mean, after the session that we had today, you uh, we, we, did we actually settle above the lows from previous looking here? Yeah. We so did, okay. If this is today's settlement, 44, right? Okay. Um, but, I mean, it, it's what's interesting is you took a shot at the new lows. You had a lower cash session, too, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. So, we were, well, please. Yeah, the barrel was down one and three quarters, right? The, the right. block got bit off the low. The barrel did settle lower. So you had a lower cheese session technically. But yeah, I mean, you, we, it's every time we get down around this price level, 1735, yeah. 1740. The market just does not like to be below that price. No. So it's similar to what we were looking at in Deece Meal, right? If you've been short 
it's you know, might want to think about liquidating or at the very least converting your you know converting your risk to puts by buying calls or just get out of your futures and just buying puts outright. Only caveat to this is that you know the secondary stuff is not telling you that it's oversold yet. Like right here, there's still room to go. And really you just crossed into negative momentum here. Mm-hmm. So like you're kind of like it's 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 like do or die time for this contract. Well, it's almost like if we're gonna have more of a push lower, you're gonna need to settle below 1730 to really accelerate that. Yeah, and I think it's gonna need I think it's gonna take a cash market really, you know, continuing to break. Right. It's almost right. like if you're selling decent now, you're selling the cash market today. Correct. because um, I have current cash around 17 bucks with no premium. I think it's yep. using 36 Y. That's not, you know, here at 1745, 17 and a half. I mean, you're adding in a pretty standard NDPSR premium. So it's arguably, you can argue that DEEST really isn't much of a premium, if at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you need to see further weakness in cash. What does that take? I think multiple sellers in both, obviously, for the price action. And then, you know, it, let's say you got that and then you got to close into new lows and then open lower. That could get ugly still. Mm-hmm. Like said, you've got some room here to get into oversold territory still. But this is just kind of giving you like a like, hey, like it's like a warning, like you know, if you've been short, you may want to think about liquidating or at the very least buying calls, doing something to mitigate that risk. Right. And the thing about December class three is we haven't even started actually pricing this yet, right? So I mean, it's more weeks. Right. Yeah. We we have a while. Still, there's another show I think I've seen in in the spaceship when I've just been hanging around in this like ocean of stars. But uh, what's that called? It's a bald guy. Our, uh, our good friend, Joe Schmidt. Joe Schmidt, loaded. that's right. Joe Schmidt. Go check out Joe Schmidt's show. Learn a little bit more about NDPSR. Well, Mando, we appreciate you coming on while Cody and Andy are gone. Walking through a few different charts with us, hopefully helping everyone else understand what those two handsome devils look at every single day of their lives. Now, if you would like to, our contact information is going to be on the screen. We would greatly appreciate your feedback. That's all for today, and we'll see you next time on Tech Talk. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yeah, can you even tell? <laughs> it is fantastic. <laughs> this thing is hot, by the way. <laughs> I bet it is, this thing dude. is so hot. <laughs> it's like having a rug on my head and just dying. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Talk. <laughs> Welcome to Feed Team. <laughs> 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 All right, bye, other Jim. Ah, See you, Jim. See you, Jim. <laughs>